Greetings and welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. My name is Wallace Smith. It's wonderful to have you here. And this news item actually is a bit old, but there's been so much current events, uh, so many things going on that I haven't been able to get to this, but I've really wanted to because I thought it was a well-written article. It actually comes from the January 6th, 2016 Federalist, or the Federalist uh, website, and the title is, Politicians' response to transgenders is likely to increase suicides. Uh, it's an article by Walt Hare, and he writes with a special kind of authority because he himself had been a transgendered individual for a number of years, actually gone through the surgery uh, and then turned back from that. Actually, the, the, the words right under the heading really make a good point. It summarizes things pretty well. It says, a December 2015 study shows no evidence of cross-gender brain in transgenders. What they did find suggests a link to mental disorders, which are in turn linked to suicide. Uh, he makes the point here, according to suicide.org, untreated mental illness is the key factor in 90% of all suicides with depression being the leading cause. The findings of two recent studies, he continues, help to explain the cause of transgender depression, known as gender dysphoria. The findings offer a reason why transgenders claim their cross-gender thoughts and emotions cannot be controlled and why they feel the need for cross-gender behavior in social interactions. Uh, let me jump to his commentary about the studies. He says, in December, a December 2015 study suggests transgender brains have a marker for the existence of mental illness. The researchers attempted to find support for the idea that transsexuals have a brain that corresponds to their wished for gender. So he's saying they were hoping to find signs that a man who thought he was a woman actually had a brain like a woman's. Um, but they found no evidence of cross-gender brains. Instead, they found an abnormality that suggests a link to psychological and behavioral dysfunction and mental disorders in the brains of transgenders. These findings support the results of another study released August 2014 that found 62.7 percent of those diagnosed with gender dysphoria suffer from psychiatric Axis I comorbid disorders or mental illness. Now he's not saying that all of them necessarily have this sign. It was a high percentage. However, let me just say right here, please don't be angry at me for simply telling you what the studies say and reading this report of what the studies say. If you want to be angry, be angry at science. This was a study by scientists trying to understand uh, brain structures and how they may impact uh, transgender individuals and those who feel such pulls. But he makes this point, how can transgenders be properly treated when the transgender power brokers deny that psychological disorders may be a contributing factor? And that really is the issue. No one's talking about how a man who wants to be a woman has a problem. They say the society is the only problem. And he's saying that's not reality and that's not what these studies are saying. I thought this paragraph was his most powerful. He speaks of his personal experience and says, I was a young person who had an undiagnosed comorbid disorder that drove me to unnecessary gender reassignment surgery, a surgery authorized by a homosexual activist. I lived as a transgender female for eight years, but gender reassignment wasn't the answer for me. I was still suicidal. I recovered through psychotherapy to uncover the underlying disorder and through my faith that gave me hope for the journey. He actually wraps up and says, I have lived free from the transgender madness for more than 20 years. Oh, we are truly in strange times where it seems like the world is upside down. Uh, it reminds me of the DC Comics Bizarro World, where everything was the reverse of what it's supposed to be. Up is down and right is left and the beginning is the end. Everything is in confusion. And we're not helping people by perpetuating confusion. What can we do in a society like this where the foundation itself is being cracked and crumbling and turning upside down? The Bible actually says we're fairly limited. 
Actually, in Psalm 11, in verse 3, it says, If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? And sadly, it's a rhetorical question. If we can't even agree on what it means to be a man and a woman, or even agree that there simply are two genders, then we really can't do much at all. But what you and I can do, personally, is for these people that need help, we can seek to be part of the solution instead of the problem. Because there is a God of truth, and He does reveal the only kind of foundation society can survive on. Thank you for watching, and please check out our other resources at tomorrowsworld.org.